Welcome to Nomad PHP Lightning Talks. I'm Joe Ferguson. Nomad PHP Lightning Talks are a 10-minute talk that give a high-level overview or an in-depth look at a small portion of a PHP-related topic. Lightning Talks are a great way for new speakers to build their speaking resume and for long-time speakers to test drive new talk ideas. If you'd like to give a 10-minute Lightning Talk, please email me, joe at nomadphp.com. Right now we have Martin Stepenko, and his talk is called Event-Driven Architecture for Microservices. Please make sure you visit Joined In after the talk and leave Martin some feedback. Martin, take it away. All right. So first of all, thank you for having me here. And today I'm going to talk about event-driven architecture for microservices. Uh, but first, a little introduction of myself. So uh, I'm located in Riga, Latvia, uh, which is in Europe. Uh, you can also find me on Twitter. Uh, I currently work as a lead engineer at Casco. Uh, which is a vintage startup based in London, and we're building an awesome uh, insurance platform. Um, I worked with PHP and other technologies since around year 2002, and I am also AWS certified solutions architect. Uh, on top of that, I'm currently working towards my bachelor's degree in the University of Latvia. Uh, so let's begin. So why microservices? Um, basically, uh, when we started to build our platform at Casco, we had the luxury of choosing how we want to do it, and we chose microservices for many reasons. Uh, by using microservice architecture, you can build small services that are all uh, responsible for a single thing. You can use different technologies for each service, uh, and most importantly, uh, it allows you to scale only certain parts of your application stack which was quite important in our case. Um, since we have services that get huge amounts of traffic and we have some other services that are more relaxed to traffic. So soon enough we faced the question, how do these services will communicate with each other? Uh, and to make this uh, clear, I've come up with a simple example which I'm sure will make you understand the challenge we were facing. So let's assume the following scenario. Uh, a customer places uh, an order, uh, then we need to generate a PDF invoice document, uh, which would be stored somewhere in some storage, and then finally the order object needs to be updated with a reference to the PDF document. Our initial approach was to make HTTP requests to each service. So when customer places an order to orders API, it would then tell the PDF service to generate the the asset, which would store it, and then uh, the PDF service would make an update to, to order with a reference to the document. Um, so the problem with this is that services have to be aware of each other. For instance, uh, PDF service must know how to update an order. Uh, basically, it means it, it has to be, uh, it has to contain code that uh, will be aware of how to make this update. On top of that, uh, it becomes more and more complex as we add more services uh, because you have more and more communication and more and more uh, many reasons and uh, p potential failures that could occur. Uh, another problem is that one of those services goes uh, down. Uh, for example, in this case, if PDF uh, service would not be online at that point when order service asks it to generate the, the document, the document would never be generated and that's probably not something you want. Um, all in all, uh, we came to conclusion that this does not scale very well and we need to change it. So in our second approach, uh, we try to turn uh, things the other way around. In this example, it would mean that the PDF would not make updates to order object directly, nor the order service would tell the PDF service to generate a document. So uh, the question is, how would this work, right? And here, here events come into play. In our second approach, we decided that, that we will have uh, following things. Uh, one event queue for each service, all services will send events to one centralized bus. Uh, we use AWS for this. Each service queue would be subscribed to that uh, centralized event. 
and that each service will run a background worker that will listen to its event queue and then take necessary action when it receives an event that is recognized. Let's go through a workflow that illustrates that. Uh, again, pretty much the same scenario, but with different workflows. So, first of all, customer places an order via the orders API. Uh, then, uh, order is stored in database, and event is emitted into a message bus. Then, event is relayed to all event event queues. And since all service workers are listening for events in their respective queue, the event which is the final destination. Um, now, the workers that don't need to take an action on this event can simply ignore it. But the PDF service would recognize the event and take an action. It would generate the document and store it somewhere. Finally, it would emit another event into central bus and it all starts over again. Uh, since this time it's a different event, other services take action. Orders worker uh, can update the order with a reference to the document. And email service can simply send the document to the customer. And again, new events uh, would get emitted by services, which then could be ig either ignored or not. This all repeats in a loop while there are more events emitted. The, ben the benefits that we see with this architecture are that, for instance, if an exception or error is raised on a service, the queue won't receive the ACK signal, which means that uh, the message will be picked up later. For instance, let's say uh, if we are not able to deliver email because the third party service is not responding, it will simply be delivered whenever it comes back, which is great. Another thing is that services don't need to know about how to make updates to other services anymore, which essentially means that the, the logic can be isolated to a single service. Uh, so in, in our particular example, it would mean that the order service does not have to know how to make an update to an order. Also, adding more services becomes totally painless. And finally, uh, it scales quite well. If you have any questions, feel free to email or tweet me. Uh, also, please leave feedback on joined in. Thanks. Thanks for joining us for another Nomad PHP Lightning Talk. If you'd like to give a Lightning Talk, please email joe at nomadphp.com. Please make sure you visit joined in and leave Martin some feedback.